it's Jasper and today I thought it'd be fun to talk about the source material I have been using recently for my writing. So in my last writing vlog I talked about how I've been in a little bit of a writing slump recently and obviously that is a bummer and um, between that video and now I've gone away on vacation I've recharged myself I had a really wonderful beach time uh, at my family's cottage and I'm feeling recharged I'm feeling ready I also was able to do some work on my book which was really exciting and one of the things that I used to sort of help me get out of my slump though I'm not entirely out of it yet um, but one thing that I've used and I've used before is some good source material to help my writing along. So today I thought it'd be fun to talk about the source material I have been using. So book number one has been Graham Gibson's The Bedside Book of Birds, an avian miscellanea. National bestseller. Lovely. A lovely little book. Um, exactly what it says, Bedside Book of Birds. It's essentially just a book um, signed, signed by the author. And uh, it's just a book with kind of really beautiful pictures of birds in it and uh, has little stories about like man's relationship to birds and like, like lovely stuff like human foot and a bird's mouth and vultures and stuff um, and it's sort of just a neat book to flip through and uh, kind of get ideas. I love books like this that are, as, as you're gonna see from my list, I love books that are maybe a little bit random but have beautiful illustrations. Artwork always gets my brain going um, and artwork paired with the stories is just kind of a fun little thing. Here is a little tidbit from this book. This day is Monday morning. Tama, Tama, Tum. And Brew Owl answered, Ooh, Tama, Tama, Tum. Meanwhile, Brew Pigeon, when no one could see him at night, sneaked down from the branch he was perched on and ate a few berries in the morning. He drank from the dew that fell on the branch. So, you know, just, just, uh, regular source material to inspire some weird things. <laughs> the next book I've been using is sort of similar along the lines of, well, I don't know, hey, here it is. <laughs> ah! This is Latin for Gardeners. This is a book I just got last Christmas. It was a specific ask for present. I found it and I was like, oh my gosh, this book looks amazing. It would be great as a source book for writing. And I was right, it is. Um, it's a lovely book just to just to flip through, um, but as somebody who did uh, Latin in my undergrad, it's kind of fun to <laughs> go over Latin again and pairing it with the flowers. There's beautiful illustrations throughout the book. Ooh, shasha, a sanas, all these illustrations, and then you've got lots of fun. Latin stuff like if you ever wanted to know let's see ooh there's a little section in the corner Latin in action English or common ivy is the least demanding of plants evergreen with a twining and clinging habit helix meaning spiral shaped it'll grow in sun or shade and a full hardy and is full and hardy sorry in winter, its berries provide an important food source for birds, while in late summer, the fall bees feast on its small white flowers. So you see how this could be kind of very interesting if you needed to know something about that plant or uh, what I've been using it more commonly for because I've got quite a bit of forest in my story is finding, you know, kind of neat plants and, and uh, it's got little tidbits on them and, you know, using their Latin names or, or changing it around or naming characters from this book. So it's a good, good fun source book. The next book is my favorite of 
all of them but for right now so this book I have been reading the most it's been the most helpful for the section I'm in and that has a lot to do with the current character I'm writing who is like ah, she's real sick she's just a she's just a killer she's awesome crazy deep into magic which makes this book perfect because it was a book a textbook actually I had to buy for a class in my undergrad called magic in the ancient world and the textbook was magic witchcraft and ghosts in the Greek and Roman world this awesome picture of I would guess Circe on it um, this book I love to read it's really fun but it's also very creepy and so it's one that as much as I've been using it a lot I need to read in like broad daylight and preferably if there's somebody else home because there's sections of it that are just <laughs> Yeah, kind of like scary and creepy which is all what you want but like when you're all by yourself it's not as much fun the book is a primary source it's full of primary sources of people who are either philosophers of the period and reciting you know what they believe to be happening in their community or people that were witches and magicians and wizards not magicians because those are the ones that are at children's parties but uh <laughs> wizards and witches and things like that and so people writing down their like diy spells being like, I tried this potion, I collected mandrakes in a garment that had no knots in it under the full moon, um, you know, made my little potion, but as it, as it turns out, it, it didn't help to make my love want me, he just died instead. Um, but then there's like some that are really creepy where you have, uh, there's a particular passage of a philosopher who was talking about Circe, I think it was Circe who helps uh, Jason the hero quite a bit and <laughs> she's like Jason you know like uh, I know how to make you really strong and invincible just like go out you know under a full moon deep into the forest and dig yourself a pit and then get naked and and like kill a female pig uh, this particular way and let the blood run all over you and um, uh, just like on you and uh, cover every part of your body and cover your sword and your shield and then you'll be invincible and you're reading it and you're like this is like really interesting but like uh, this is this is like icky and that poor pig and I don't want to be alone while I read these <laughs> these strange books so it's been so it's a really useful book for me it's 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 a lot of fun to read I've just gone back and reread it a bunch of times but like for instance, there's a section all about ghosts and the untimely dead and the dead by violence, the haunted houses, ghost laying, exorcisms, the exploitation of boys' souls, and werewolves, all the all the basics, all the things you need to know. So this, if you are doing you know quite a bit of work where you've got characters that are delving into magic, this is an excellent source book on Greco-Roman magic. So the next book is another favorite and it's one that I haven't been using that much lately. I've used it um, maybe a few weeks ago, but it's one that I always come back to. And it's a special sort of favorite and a long time favorite because of the contents and also the story around it. When I was in my undergrad, I used to go to the bookstore and look at books that I was not going to buy because I already had bought in like, you know, $500 worth of textbooks and books and things like that, you know, for the school semester. But I would go and look at books and just read them or I'd go to the library and pick up books. And my then boyfriend and now husband um, would come with me sometimes and I would like show him around and be like, look at this book. Isn't it cool? And like, look at this book. and. I gave a special fuss about one book and I was like, this is the best book ever. And then that Christmas, he bought it for me. And the book is, ta -da! The Brewer's Dictionary, Brewer's Dictionary of Irish Phrase and Fable. And if you've never had a dictionary type reference book Oh, go out and look for them. They're so much fun to read. And this one, it's got a little love note in it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful book because if you know anything about myth or fairy tale, it's fun to just use as a cross-reference. You find stuff that you do know about 
and then use it to um, find reference to things that you don't know about. And so for instance, if I was looking up um, one of the things I really, really liked when I was first reading about Irish mythology was the Morrigan. So if I look up... Morrigan, or Morrigu, sometimes referred to as the Morrigan, the chief goddess of war and slaughter, synonymous with ghastliness, in the Celtic phantom. She favored the form of a raven, a carrion crow, carrion crow, giving those birds an evil reputation. She was active on the side of the Tuatha-Danann. So if you don't know what that is, it's got it's all in caps. So then you can look that up. Um, at the battles of Mag Turk, and then you can read about that battle. Uh, it's got another reference to it. And had intercourse with the Dagda. And if you don't know what the Dagda is, you can look that up. And uh, her relentless animosity against Kul Khan. And at the time, I was like, who is this guy? Because I knew nothing about Irish myth and legend. So I could look that up. Her relentless animosity against Kul Khan was based on his on her rejection, on his rejection of her advances. And when he managed to wound her in the form of a she-wolf, he realized he would not survive in the final struggle. As he died at the Battle of Ford, spoilers! She perched in the form of a crow on his shoulder and watched as a beaver lapped up his blood. Ah, what a romantic book to buy your girlfriend who will later become your wife. So this is a book that I especially love for reference. It's a good book just sometimes if I'm kind of, ah, oh, no, things like that. Just, um, it's got little tidbits of stories in it as you look it up. And also you can just paper trail um, going from source to source, from source to source to source, and find things that you didn't know about, or come across things that you had forgotten about. Like, I had personally forgotten about, um, the, the, her perching on his shoulder, uh, as he died, and watching a beaver lap up his blood, which was a very important detail, and how dare I forget. The last and final book that I have for today's video is similar to the last in the way that it is another dictionary type book, and this one's a big one. It is the Dictionary of Mythology, an A to Z of themes, legends, and heroes. It's very heavy and big, you see, is a women down. Let's read about, for instance, uh, Kangi Sapa, which is a North American background, uh, and a black crow. Aha, like the Morrigan. He abandoned his friend, Wandli Ganshki, to die so he could marry the girl they both loved. Classic. Wandli survived, uh oh, and Kangi Sapa was killed in battle and married the widow. So, so there you go. Now you know something you didn't know. And then if you're kind of like, well, I don't know, is there more stuff about black crows? You use both hands with this book. Classic. Black Crow, see Kangi Sapa. We already did. Well, that seems weird. Oh, because the Morgan is a raven. That's why they're not in here. Uh huh. Black Magic. There's a very tiny portion about black magic in here. Magic involving the devil. The term embraces such practices as Makumba, voodoo, sorcery, and witchcraft, and generally implies manipulation of the forces of evil. I wonder if evil's in here. Uh, e, F, F. Yeah. Okay, so we have evil eye, which we all know about, right? We know about the evil eye. If not, look it up in your mix in your book or use Google. 
because <laughs> um, evil one, the evil one, see Aramin. Ah, uh, no, that's it. So it doesn't have an opinion on evil. You would have to, in general, find it in here. <laughs> now, the thing you might be asking is, Jasper, why would you have these source books instead of, um, like, why wouldn't you just Google things rather than use these source books? And the thing is, I do Google quite a bit. I Google everything all the time. And when people ask me questions, especially my students, I'll be like, well, have you Googled it first? <laughs> um, unless it's something I really love talking about that I can't help myself. It's already coming out. And then I'm like, ah, Google it. Learn how to research yourself. Um, but the thing that's wonderful about these books is that one, when you're on your computer all the time for work, um, it's nice to have a visual break from the screen and so to be able to work through books. The other thing is, is that having these source books in person compared to just searching for, you know, some mythic thing, say for the Morrigan, and then from there searching, and then from there searching, and then from there searching, you can do that. But the thing is, what's really neat is I can plop down and it's kind of, these source books are sort of like going to the library in the way that when you go to the library and you're doing some research and say you know there's a particular book you need or you go like I need to know more about the Morrigan and then the book is like oh you should check out Gods and Fighting Men which is in this particular section so when you're doing research you shouldn't just grab that one book what you do then is you look at the books that are on the shelf so if this is I mean, and it's not, clearly. This is The Hobbit, right? Yes, ding, 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 chicken dinner. Um, say this was Gods and Fighting Men. You want to look at the books that are all next to it because they're going to be similarly themed. They're going to have things of value. And you might not realize um, that you need to check out a book called, um, I don't know, oh, like The Celtic Twilight or something that might be shelved with it, or Kukan, or, um, which is also by Lady Gregory. Uh, there, there's going to be books around it that you never would have known about or that a search result for the Morrigan might not have yielded, that might not have suggested you read the book, but that's what you as the researcher are now doing is you're making new connections. So just as going to the library and finding that one book you need and then looking at the books that are around it, um, using these <laughs> source books, which are just <laughs> conversation starters or things to read in the tub or uh, on a lazy Saturday, What's really great about them is I could be looking for a particular thing and then it will link me to other stuff that I never would have bothered researching. But the other thing is what often happens is when I'm looking for something in here, like say I was looking for uh, La Mia. Let's see. Ah, uh, she's right here. La Mia. Um, there's also Lam Gah had a, a warrior of Ulster and I know about the Ulster cycle and this sort of thing. He met Ket in combat and had one arm cut off. Well, that's kind of interesting. And there's also Lambegus, a uh, knight of King Mark's court. Um, Lambton Worm, which I have to see Ladily Worm for, but these are interesting. Um, there's all sorts of interesting stuff around it that had I not been looking for that I wouldn't have found. But also, if I don't know what I'm looking for, I can't just like go on Google and be like, I don't know something show me something I can instead open this book and I can kind of just like flip through it which <laughs> I've done quite a bit it's kind of like going on a weird scavenger hunt so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video about the source books that are the source material I've been using for my writing the past two weeks again the book that I've been using a lot is this kid right here I've been using magic witchcraft and ghosts in the Greek and Roman world. This is a really excellent book. Um, this is another example, like the stuff that you can get in here, you're not gonna find uh, all of it online because it's simply not online. There's certain information that um, isn't isn't available and, uh, or it might not be organized in this way or the commentary that you get with it, you're not gonna have. So this is the book that I've been using a lot this week, but these other books I've also been using, and if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen them in some glamorous shots of my writing desk, uh, which is my kitchen table, which I fill with books. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. As always, let's be a community of writers that help each other out. And cheers.